نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه اما بعد uh, i start by praising allah indeed all praise is due to allah we praise him we seek his help and we seek his forgiveness uh, and uh, whomever allah guides no one can misguide whomever allah misguides no one can guide to the right path and also we seek refuge with him from uh, the evil of our souls and from the sins of our deeds i testify that there is no true god except allah Uh, alone who has no partner and that Muhammad والسلام, is his slave and messenger uh, uh, today brothers and sisters before I go any further assalamu alaikum uh, and uh, today we have the topic of evil eye and amulets and I will call them at tamaim so uh, when we uh, talk about some Islamic issue as well as the topic itself we maybe we can learn a few arabic words and maybe it will plant the love of arabic in some some of you because arabic is a great language i advise everyone who can uh, and who thinks he can't to to learn it as much as possible because it opens uh, so many doors that you can't really imagine so today we're talking about about what we call in arabic al ain which uh, has a few meanings in Arabic. It's one of them is the eye, one of them is a spring and source and so on. Today, of course, we talk about the meaning that is the eye and at tamaim. Tamaim is the plural of tamima. And I will explain now, as we always do uh, together, we start by uh, exploring the linguistic meanings of words before we go to the main topic and the, sh- the meaning of those terms in the Sharia. Al-Ain, if you look in the dictionaries of Arabic, they say, يُقَالُ أَصَابَتْ فُلَانًا عَيْنٌ إِذَا نَظَرَ إِلَيْهِ عَدُوٌّ أَوْ حَسُودٌ فَأَثَّرَتْ فِيهِ فَمَرِدَ بِسَبَبِهَا They say that uh, a person has been afflicted with Ain, with evil eye. In this case, we call evil eye in English, but it can be translated as just eye, but we, that's what we mean. If someone who is, they say, an enemy, an enemy, or someone who is hasud, is, has a lot of hasad, envy. So uh, hasud is not just someone who just envies once in a while, which can happen to any one of us, which we should try and fight. Hasud is someone who does it on a constant basis because of the word hasud in Arabic is uh, what we call Sigatul Mubalagha, which is like Ghafur. Ghafur not only does he forgive and cover the sins, but does it all the time and as much as uh, as he wants. Uh, so that affects him, so he gets ill due to that. يُقَالُ عَانَهُ يَعِينُهُ عَيْنًا فَهُوَ عَائِن إِذَا أَصَابَهُ بِالْعَيْن أي اسم الفاعل وَالْمُصَابُ معين. So that's in Arabic for those of you who want. Uh, Arabic grammar. Secondly, وَالْعَيْنُ حَقْ كَمَا ثَبَتَ ذَلِكَ فِي صَحِيحِ السُنَّةِ That evil eye is true because many people, they believe that evil eye doesn't exist. It's only imagination and people trying to pretend. Just like some people say about magic, uh, as was mentioned before. But we have uh, authentic a hadith. One of them is the hadith of Ibn Abbas, رضي الله عنهما, in Sahih Muslim. In which the Prophet ﷺ said, Al Ainu Haq. Just like we have a hadith that says a sihru haq, that magic is true, we have a hadith that says Al Ainu Haq, that Ain, evil eye, is also true. Walaw kana shayun sabak al qadar, la sabakat hul ain. And if there was something to precede qadar, it would have been Ain. And the ulama. Uh, one of them, Sheikh Mubarak Furi, rahmullah, in his explanation of Sahih Muslim, they said they said that this is to show that the the strength 
and the damage that evil eye does and can do هذه مبالغة في إثبات العين وقوة إصابتها this doesn't mean because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said if there was something this in Arabic we call تعليق بالمستحيل i.e. Uh, like Allah said, if there were more than one God, meaning it's impossible, it doesn't exist. But if there were something that were to change Qadr, then or to precede it, it would have been Ayn, due to its strength, because it's so strong. And of course, the Haqiqa, how it happens, we don't know. Uh, we, the ulama, they discussed, and Ibn al-Qayyim, Rahmullah, and Zadul al-Mahad, and many others who talked about the issue, they said it happens like this, the person's evil and things like that, but we don't really know exactly how it happens. So if someone were to ask us, how does evil eye happen, we wouldn't know exactly how to tell them because this is from the unseen. We don't really know it. Just like sihr. We don't know how exactly sihr happened, even though we have some clues and some things that we know through which we can have some idea. Uh, so evil eye, it exists and there are people who can actually, you can say, afflict with it by order. I know personally people who spoke to me and they told me they witnessed themselves, two brothers in one Muslim country, competing with each other who can do more damage. And one of them, he said, he fell the tree with his evil eye. The other stopped a car and the tires got punctured. <laughs> so one of them got threatened to stop doing it because he was doing so much damage. So meaning that these people generally, they are not good people as a general rule, even though evil people, even many ulama say there is a hadith, but it's not authentic. Many ulama say that you yourself can afflict yourself, but that's very rare. Very rare. Generally, uh, and that is the correct opinion, it comes from people who have evil intentions or they have a lot of hasad because adu, why the ulama of Lugha Arabic mentioned it. Adu means an enemy. An enemy never wants good for you. He's happy for you to be dead. I mean, de depending on the animosity. But that's why the Prophet ﷺ said for us not to, not to, to be brothers, not to argue and divide, because this is what he called Haliqa to Din. It removes the Din, it shaves it off, just like a person shaves his hair. Because when you have bad relations, people they oh he prays in that masjid, I won't go to that masjid. Or he came to this masjid, I will go to the other masjid, and so on. So it's very dangerous. And also the Prophet advised us not to have hasad. In Sahih Muslim as well, he said, لا تحسدوا. لا تحسدوا. Don't have hasad for one another. Don't envy one another. Because envy is uh, very destructive. لا تحسدوا. So that is one of the things that can prevent it. How does one teach oneself not to envy? That is first of all to have a class to do things for Allah, not for people. Because if you do for people, then it will bring problems. Not only the deed will not be accepted, but also in the dunya it will bring problems. And also not to want that thing and to be happy when the other. That takes effort, brothers and sisters. It doesn't just come. Some people have it naturally, but that's very rare. The person has to, just like we train to walk when we are small, and then train to eat and things like that, we have to train not to have hasad. That is not easy, but it is achievable. And that's why Allah told us to, to not have that. Uh, and in the Quran, he said, وَلَا تَتَمَنَّوْ مَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ بَعْدَكُمْ عَلَى بعد. Do not wish for what Allah preferred some of you over others. And later in the ayah, he said, وَاسْأَلُوا اللَّهَ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ Ask Allah, if someone has a good wife, good family, good car, good something, good knowledge, good qira'ah, good uh, uh, recitation of the Qur'an, whether it is in the deen or dunya, we cannot have hasad. 
Because hasad generally means I want that person to lose it. That's the first aim. Whether I want to have it or someone to have it or not, not anyone to have it, that these are different degrees of envy. The worst is I don't want anyone to have it, even myself. So that's real evil. Meaning I just don't want that person to have it. So for that reason, it's very dangerous for us. That's why we in Surah Al-Falaq, we say, وَوَا مِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَد And I will mention, inshallah, how to uh, prevent and how to deal with that. First of all, let us mention some ilaj. Because how it affects, we don't know exactly, but it is generally, it comes from a person who is envious. That's why the Prophet ﷺ told us that when we want to achieve something, and that hadith was authenticated by Shaykh al-Albani rahmahullah and other ulama of hadith that istainu ala qada'i hawa'ijikum bil kitman use concealment to achieve your aims fa inna li kulli ni'matin hasida because every ni'ma there is a hasid for it so for example you have nice hair you never thought about it but someone has no hair or bad hair so he envies your hair. Because sometimes we never think of the ni'mah we have. And we have, alhamdulillah, more, many, many ni'mah we don't even know. Many bounties we don't know. So for that reason, if someone wants to do a project or something and they fear that they may be someone envious, someone wants to get married. They say they found a nice sister or the sister found a nice brother. And they suspect that someone will be envious. You shouldn't tell them. That's one of the ways to not. Uh, and then when it happens, then the ayah applies. As for the ni'mah of your Lord, then speak about it. The ulama said, Because to be grateful, one of the ways to express gratefulness to Allah for the ni'mah he gives us is to, to, to mention it. Subhanallah, ikhwan, wallahi, we live in ni'mah, or I have this ni'mah, and things like that. And that is very important, because very many people just complain. Just complain. Oh, today, you know, the price is this, that, that, everything wrong. Yeah? And so that is not mentality to have. And generally, uh, you, might have, you might say I have a, an agenda against channels, but I don't. Generally, TV and everything teaches you to complain, not to be happy with what you have. And the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith sahih, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ أَسْلَمَ وَرُزِقَ كَفَافًا وَقَنَّعَهُ اللَّهُ بِمَا أَتَى That indeed the successful person is who is Muslim, accepted Islam or is a Muslim, and Allah provided him with how much he needs. And he is content with what, is, what, what suffices him. How many of us can say we are like that? Sometimes we, we get, like the Prophet said, some people, they get a valley of gold and they want another one. You say, just in case you get the second one. No. That is not good mentality because that breeds ungratefulness to Allah. That breeds thinking bad of Allah. That is one of the worst things you can do. Why do you think people, doesn't matter Muslim or non-Muslim, they commit suicide? Because they think bad of Allah. They think there is no way out. Allah is not going to improve the situation. And what is this? This is the worst. That's why today in the khutbah I said, the people who give this and make young people especially think like that, they are criminals. They are criminals because they teach the young generation especially, even the old. But especially the young, they teach them to think bad of Allah. And the Prophet said that even when we die, we should think good of Allah. So to, to think bad of Allah is not a, a good. Even in the, the Sahaba, when they were being tortured, some of them, and persecuted some of them, radiallahu anhum, the Prophet never taught them that. He did tarbiyah of them that it will improve. Even if you die like that, it will improve for others. So that is very important, the mindset to prevent all these things and for us not to envy.
we have some person, uh, relatives, neighbors, uh, our uh, brothers and sisters, we should want for them. That's why this hadith is great. None of you truly believes. None of you truly believes. Doesn't mean we are kuffar. We don't become mu'min. Because mu'min is a high degree. Until we love for our brother. And of course that everything brother applies to sister for her sister. What you love for yourself. And many ulama said it means we want for our brothers to be better than us because we want to be better than anyone. So that is the true meaning of this hadith. And if we understood and implemented, most of Ayn would be eliminated. Why? Because it wouldn't happen. Now, so the Prophet ﷺ, not only did he describe the illness, he described the cure to us as well, alayhi salam. And he said in hadith sahih, ما أنزل الله داء إلا أنزل معه دواء. That Allah didn't create or reveal or send down an illness except that He revealed cure. علمه من علمه وجهله من جهله. Some people know it, some people don't. So, for example, people say there is no cure for this disease. For this means that they don't know it yet. There is a cure for every disease. For that reason, we have cure for that. So the Prophet ﷺ said in the same hadith which said Al Ainu Haq, at the end he said, Fa'ida stughsiltum fagsilu. And there was a case of uh, Sahel bin Hunayf who was doing wudu, and I think I mentioned it before very briefly. Radiallahu anhu, one of the Sahaba, mentioned many books of hadith. And uh, Amir bin Rabi'ah, another looked at him and he had. He envied him because he, he said, I've never seen such smooth skin when he revealed his. And Sahal bin Hunayf, anhu, he fell down. It was so strong. He fell down without being able to move. Then the Prophet was informed, and in some narrations, he fell down a well, the well that he took the water from, and he got stuck. And the, the Prophet was forced to come, get down the well, and get him up. So the Prophet in one of the narrations, says, Taghayyad. Taghayyad means became very angry, because ghayd in Arabic is not ghadab. It's ghayd, is the extreme anger. And he said, alayhi salatu salam, Ala ma taqtulun ikhwanakum. Why are you killing your brothers? Allah barrakt. Why didn't you say Barakallahu fiqh, Barakallahu alaik? You make dua for him with Baraka. That's one of the ways to stop it. Barakallahu fiqh, Baraka alaik, or something like that. And of course, also, uh, many ulama said, looking at Surah Al Kahf, MashaAllah, la quwwata illa billah. So that, these things, they, and also in this hadith, Sahih Muslim, he said, when you're requested to do ghusl, to do wudu, and I will explain now. What, what the Prophet meant by that, you should do it. And here, uh, in that uh, hadith of that man, Sahil bin Hunayf, anhu, who was afflicted, he said, the person who afflicts him, the person who looks or afflicts, even if he's blind, even if he's blind, he can afflict, because it comes from the heart, not from the eye only. So if someone describes to him something and he can't see, but he is either evil or he is envious, it can happen as well. So he said, the person who afflicts the other, al-a'in, the dua, should wash his face, wajhahu. So the face is this, between two ears, that's in fiqh important to know, in, in wudu, between two ears, and where the hair starts to grow, at the top to the chin, the bottom of the chin here. That's the definition of face because that's how we face a person when we meet someone. The face, the two hands, when we say in Arabic hands without any what we call had, that is also important to know for fiqh, it means up to the wrists. That's why Allah regarding wudu said, 
because if you say idea come in Arabic, it means up to the wrist. But he said your hands in wudu up to the elbows and including the elbows. So here it's ju it just says hands. It means up to the wrists, the face, the, the elbows. Wash the elbows. Yeah? The knees. And the end, the tips of your legs. Or the feet and the inside of your izar izar is what people used to wear um, we can say maybe the inside of your underwear now the ulama have two opinions about that some said your private parts some said the inside of your clothes so the face the hands up to the wrists the elbows the knees the tips of the feet and the inside of the underwear and all of that the water that comes from that should be put in a container then that water should be thrown yusabbu should be poured over the person afflicted from the back because that's how the professor said from the back on his head and shoulders and they said when they did it to Sahar bin Hunayf, he got up and walked like nothing happened. So if someone says, what's this? We don't believe in it. We say, we believe. We say, سَمِعْنَا وَطَعْنَا آمَنَّا كُلُّ مِنْ عِنْدِ رَبِّنَا Everything is from Allah. So if someone doesn't believe, it doesn't bother us. We believe because the Prophet ﷺ told us that. Uh, and this is described in Muwatta of Imam Malik rahimahullah and Ibn Majah and authenticated by Sheikh Al-Albani and other ulama of hadith rahimahullah and also the person this is if it is known because many very often we don't know who did it but that happened in front of the other person so he could have done it I was told of a case which happened in one of Muslim country where there was a lecture like this and someone fell down as well so the person doing the lecture said no one leaves until everyone does wudu or they wash and we try every imagine how wet he must have been and uh, that is one way but it's difficult but most of the time if we don't know then the the following applies the general like reading especially they single out the whole of the quran allah said shifa but especially fatiha Surah Al-Fatiha, that's why we should try and learn it and understand it and believe in it and act on it because it's Ummul Kitab, is the mother of the book, is the, the source and the origin of the Quran. All of the Quran meanings are found in Surah Al-Fatiha. And the last two surahs, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ That's especially, but you can use Ayat Al-Kursi, especially if there is some, you suspect, jinn involved or whatever else. And the whole of the Quran. Any Quran you know you can use. By Ruqya. Ruqya, the, or you can they trans, sometimes translate as exorcism or treatment that we use Quran and Dua because Ruqya is Dua essentially. And in some of the hadith about uh, mentioned about some uh, Aisha radiallahu anha said the Prophet used to, to tell us to seek Ruqya for especially Ayn, for evil eye, and Humma, for fever. So if you want to be among the 70,000 who enter Jannah without punishment and account, and Umar ibn Khattab said, I requested the Prophet that it was too few, and he said, for every thousand Allah gave me 70,000, then you don't seek Ruqya, because this one says, they don't lie as tarqun. They don't seek ruqya. Because at the end it said, وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ They rely on Allah. But it is not haram, so that we avoid many questions. Maybe some want to ask, is it haram? It's not haram to seek ruqya. Say, brother, please. But if we know, ikhwan, I want to encourage, because this is something, in my view, we don't do enough. If we know a brother or a sister, for sisters, a sister, for brothers, brother. 
if we know someone even ill, let's, let's not go far and say it's evil eye or magic or something, they have a headache. We should try and do because the Prophet said, Man minkum an yanfa'a akhahu fal yanfa'ahu. Regarding Ruqya, he said it, alayhi salam. Whoever can benefit his brother, let him benefit him. We don't do it enough because we feel shy sometimes. We shouldn't feel shy. We save him waiting 45 minutes at the GP. And then being told to eat fresh food and uh, fruit and walk and nothing wrong with you. No? I mean, no offense if any GPs are here. But that's normally what I am told. <laughs> Uh, but I'm saying يعني, we, we can save that person we can, because it's dua as we will see in Sahih Muslim Aisha radiallahu anha said إذا اشتكى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم رقاه جبريل when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to get ill Jibreel used to give ruqya to him and of course Jibreel عليه الصلاة والسلام is teaching how to do for us in Sahih Muslim this hadith بسم الله يبريك in the name of Allah he cures you Tawheed that's we have to try and understand because uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, imam of the, one of the imams of people of Tawheed, he, he used to say, وَإِذَا مَرِدْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ When I'm ill, he's the one who gives me cure, because they, they used to worship and believe things, because those things don't give any cure. They make you more ill. بسم الله يبريك, Allah cures you, بسم الله. من, ومن كل داء يشفيك. It's a reiteration from every Disease, he gives you shifa, cure. وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَد And from the evil of the envier, when he envies, وَشَرِّ كُلِّ ذِي عَيْن And the evil of every person who possesses عَيْن, evil eye. Another version in the same area in Sahih Muslim, from the, Saeed of Abu, from the hadith of Abu Sa'id, he said, رُقْيَةْ جِبْرِيل was بِسْمِ اللَّهِ أَرْقِيكْ in the name of Allah, I, I do ruqya. Min kulli shay'in yu'dhik. From everything that harms you. Min sharri kulli nafsin wa'ayni hasid. From the evil of every person and the evil eye of a hasid, envia. Allahu yashfiq, bismillahi arqiq. Allah cures you and I do ruqya in the name of Allah. All of it is tawheed. Tawheed, to just we, only Allah can cure us. Naam. Also, in uh, many books of hadith, like Sahih Muslim, Nasa'i, Ahmad, and others, on the authority of, of Aisha and others, she said, كان رسول الله عليه السلام إذا اشتكى منا إنسان مسحه بيمينه ثم قال When one of us, Aisha said, uh, when one of us used to become ill, so that includes every illness, evil eye, not evil eye, he used to wipe him with his right hand, wipe the body, and say, أَذْهِبِ الْبَأْسَ رَبَّ nas." This is very famous dua, that remove the illness, the Rabb of all the people. Rabb of all the people, the Lord of all the people. وَشْفِ أَنْتَ الشَّافِ Cure, because you are the, the Shafi, as Shafi, you are the curer. لَا شِفَاءَ إِلَّا شِفَاءَ SubhanAllah. There is no Shifa except yours. That's why it's dua, ikhwan. And it's tawheed. Shifa'an la yugadiru saqama. Aw suqma kilahuma sahih. That in a, to cure in a way that doesn't leave behind illness. And to repeat it. Doesn't matter, you can repeat it. And of course, Surah Al-Fatiha, as we know, is also called Al-Ruqya because the Prophet ﷺ said to Abu Sa'id Al-Khudri, who did it on a chief of tribe who was bitten by a scorpion, he used Fatiha to cure, to do Ruqya. And in some narrations, he read it seven times. And it's been tried by many people. When it's read seven times, it's even more effective. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, said he used to be in Mecca, and he couldn't find a doctor, and he used to get ill. And he would take Zamzam and read Fatiha in it, some ulama allowed it, and drink it, and he would become cured. So meaning it's for those who accept it, because there are some ulama who say we can't do that. So we don't call them names, Ikhwan. We have to have adab in differing. We don't call people names if they differ based upon dalil. If they differ based upon dalil. 
نعم so uh, also to prevent and to cure also to cure if a person is afflicted still and they don't know who did it in terms of evil eye adhkarun nawm before we sleep we should try to say at least one of them because there are many of them before sleeping the dhikr of nawm remember Allah and of course they are generally found in Hisnul Muslim those of you who have it may Allah reward the Shaykh who wrote it Jazakallah khaira Allah put a lot of barakah in that uh, small book uh, and it's been translated into Russian now and many other languages <coughs> MashaAllah Allah barik fih and also waking up also morning and evening and after salah because this don't don't forget Allah said fadkuruni adhkurkum now remember me I will remember you so if Allah remembers you and you ask him and you remember him and you say oh Allah there is no shifa except yours please cure me if you were to ask like this from your parents wouldn't they give you and the Prophet ﷺ said Allah has more rahmah than our parents to us more than your mother because he pointed to a woman who was uh, suckling or giving her breast to a baby newborn and said the Allah has more rahmah on you on uh, on the believers than this woman for her baby and he said salam, would you imagine that this woman would throw her baby into the fire no of course not so we must know that and that is why the job of all prophets والسلام, is not to win power is not to fight for elections their job is to attach the hearts of the believers to Allah when that happens and people in every difficulty they go to Allah and they ask Allah then and only then will their situation change that includes ruqya that includes everything else every difficulty we have that's how the Prophet Sallam used to teach his Sahaba to the extent that some of them used to come and complain and say look what how the mushriks are punishing us and torturing us and he didn't say and they said make dua this is Bukhari, Sahih al-Bukhari. Do dua. The Prophet said, Subhanallah, those who used to be before you, who used to be brought and sewn in half. Imagine, Juan, this is not an electric saw, you know. Zzz. It's like these two guys doing sewing. How long does it take to sew that person? To sew him in half. Used to, he said, people because of their deen come and take their their meat of their bones then they're alive they're alive and he said that didn't use to make them leave the deen but you are in a hurry look the reply subhanallah look the reply and look at what these fatanin tell us this is the worst situation you must do this you m where where the Prophet He's in the shade of Kaaba, around Kaaba, 360 idols, not one ruler. 360 idols. What's worse, Shirk Akbar or Zulm? And the Prophet ﷺ can't do anything. He can't even remove one. He can't remove one. He can't remove Ikhwan things they put on his back, alayhi salatu wasalam. Even Ibn Mas'ud is standing, he can't do anything until Fatima comes because it's his daughter they won't do anything and removes it and now we are saying things people say to our youth and to others and saying and saying this is not permissible our job is to connect the hearts of the people to their to their Lord to Allah when that happens and that's very strong then will we see change inna Allah la yughayyiru ma biqawm Allah doesn't change the environment of the people until they change themselves. And we have people who curse Allah, who curse the deen, who curse the Prophet ﷺ, who abuse the Prophet ﷺ. They don't pray, many of them, and we want to change. So that is very important, even in Ruqya. 
And of course, as we know, and all the doctors know, and they tell us, and this is true, that prevention is better than cure. Prevention is better than cure. Uh, and that is why I said regarding uh, Barakallahu alayk, because tabrik, that is what we call, Masha Allah la quwwata illa billah, to say that. And some of the salaf, wara'a ba'du salafi, kabni Abbasi, no mujahidin, no bi iqlabata, kitabata ayatin min al Quran, wa shurbaha. Some salaf, like Ibn Abbas, mujahid, and Abu Qilab, rahimahumullah, wa radiyah anhum, they used to allow to write some ayat from the Quran and pu uh, put them in water and drink it. So they used to allow some of them. So if you see some ulama not allowing it, they don't agree with it because they consider some sahaba didn't allow. And if you see some ulama who ag allow it with the condition like Shaykh Ibn Baz rahimullah, and others used to do with the condition in Sahih Muslim, ma lam yakun fiha shirk or fihi shirk, as long as there is no shirk in them, don't be surprised either. So we have to learn to understand the difference between the ulama. Now, also many ulama mentioned satru mahasini man yukhafu alayhi al-ayn bima yarudduha anhu to conceal especially children to conceal some ulama mentioned you don't have to agree with it but I mention it anyway to conceal some of the things that people may have envy for it doesn't mean to make someone ugly because they are beautiful but if it is possible not to show meaning Naam. also to prevent the people who are known for their envy or for evil eye from entering the house if possible Naam, because many people come to the house and we open the doors to them and some of them they don't have good intention if we suspect and something happened and keeps happening we shouldn't allow them in because we have a right it's our house and ikhwan this is from the adab of islam in surah an nur allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us a lot of adab one of them is to ask permission to enter if people don't allow us or they don't want us they're inside they don't have to let us in it's their house ikhwan some brothers say subhanallah they didn't open for me so what maybe he's in the toilet sorry to say how do we know subhanallah why do we come and think everyone is just sitting there waiting for us or someone calls and says are you busy no I'm just waiting for your call I was just thinking who should call me I know what they mean of course meaning are you busy to talk or something but in any case you have to have that other and Allah said وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَكُمُ ارْجِعُوا فَارْجِعُوا If people say go back, imagine someone comes and says I don't allow you go, say Allah said go back because that's better for you he said and the Prophet taught us to do three times three times we knock by the way they can hear they don't answer that means they're busy or they're not inside <coughs> both ways they have every right not to let us in and it's not our right to walk wherever we want because that is their property. That's where they have privacy. We have to understand it. Now, so everyone have a, has a right. And before I go to Tama, inshallah, to the, the second part, I will mention very quickly because we don't have much time. What Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah said, 10 ways to protect oneself from envying and envia in his great book, Bada'i al Fawaid, because he has a book called Al Fawaid. And it's full of fawaid from beginning to end, beneficial points. But Bada'i al Fawaid is the amazing benefits. It's the top. So he said, Rahimahullah, and this is very short because it's long, it goes long, but I made it very short so that, first of all, it doesn't take much space in my notebook. And secondly, it doesn't take much to tell you because the lecture doesn't allow us and the time and it's not good to make you all sleep number one he said at-ta'awudh billahi min sharrihi ay al-hasid wa at-tahassunu bihi wa al-luju'u ilayh ay ilallah because all of it is tawheed so first is he said it's not uh, meaning doesn't mean it's uh, the in order of importance but the first he put is 
to seek refuge with Allah from the evil of death and via and to make oneself strong through Allah and to run to Allah to seek refuge with him because there is no protection we always say la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah there is no strength or there is no power except with Allah so we have to do it when we feel we should seek and ask Allah please Allah protect me from the evil second is to have taqwa to have taqwa not to disobey Allah do what we like and then say oh Allah help me and protect me and he said hifdhuhu hifdhullah and the amrihi wa nahihi to protect Allah and the deen of Allah and that's the meaning of ihfadillah uh, of course in the famous hadith protect Allah he will protect you and that he said means to do what he said to do and to leave what he said to leave and he gave the ayah in tasbiru wa tattaqu la yadurrukum kayduhum shay'a and if you have sabr and taqwa the 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 plot of those people who are against you will harm you will not harm you in any way third one is to have sabr very important to have sabr to have patience and to know that it may take time and he said la yuqabiluhu wa la yashkuhu he shouldn't meet him if possible and shouldn't complain to him or to complain about him to others that's the real sabr wala yuhaddithu nafsahu bi adahu aslan and he shouldn't himself think about him because that may destroy him psychologically fourth to do tawakkal tawakkul at tawakkul ala allah to rely on allah to 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 ask allah and to rely on him that he will protect you from him and of course we know the famous ayin that ibn qayyim rahimahullah gave it وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Whoever relies on Allah, then he is enough for him. And subhanAllah, ikhwan, I say this out of the context, I mean of the, what Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah wrote. If we truly relied on Allah, really he would have been enough for us. Sometimes we have weakness of tawakkul. Weakness. That's why sometimes we try to do too much because we have we should do what we can but rely on Allah and I will at the end mention uh, some some pointers to that uh, fifth فراغ القلب من الاشتغال به والفكر فيه it's similar to three or two rather but to clean your heart and your mind from thinking about that person the person who has envy and to just ignore that person Six, al-iqbalu ala Allah, al-ikhlas lahu. Six is to turn to Allah and to do ikhlas for him. To turn to Allah and to do ikhlas. Number seven, tajridu tawbati ila Allah min ad This is from every affliction actually, not just from illness or evil eye or from every affliction this can work, what he said. The number seven is to do sincere tawbah to Allah, repentance, from the sins and he gave the ayah وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ that whatever musiba affliction comes your way that is because of what your hands have earned number eight he said الصَّدَقَةُ وَالْإِحْسَانُ مَا أَمْكَنْ to do sadaqa to people and the person said a very nice thing كُلُّ مَعْرُوفٍ صَدَقَ not just sadaqa with money Everything good is sadaqa. Kalima tayyiba, good word. How many of us say, mashallah, mashallah, nice thing, nice. We say, a'udhu billah, is very bad. Today we were discussing, there are some people, whatever you do, they're not happy. So we change the door in the masjid. They say, why did they spend so much money? Subhanallah. Then if you don't change, they say, the door is rubbish. So if you change, they say, la hawla wa they're wasting money. No? So never happy. So we should be, we should know when to say, most of the time it's easy to say, we can find, oh, the, the, the ceiling is not straight. What's wrong? We can always find something. The world going like that. No? Everything you can find what to criticize. No? 
the, the, the glass is half empty. Some say I'm half full. No, no, it's half empty. <laughs> now, <laughs> you can always find what to criticize. But to do sadaqah, that's one of the things. And of course, with, with, with money is also one of the first things included in this. Number nine, he said, one of the most difficult is to be better to the envier than he is to you. Now, and Allah said, "Idfa' billati hi ahsan." Meaning, re re repulse and push away the evil with what is better. So, if he doesn't talk to you, you talk to him. If he doesn't say salam, you say salam. If he says salam and he envies you, you say salam back, but you don't envy. Wa alaykum salam. And Allah described the, the mu'mineen, the believers, وَيَدْرَؤُونَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ السَّيِّئَةِ They reply with good deeds to evil deeds. And he gave the example of the Prophet ﷺ, because out of humbleness the Prophet ﷺ said, I will tell you about a prophet, and that's himself, whom his own people fought to the extent that they made him bleed. And that's himself, And he was, he said, wiping the blood and saying, Allahumma ghfir li qawmi. Oh Allah, forgive my people. فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Because they don't know. They don't know. So this person, he didn't make you bleed, maybe in the heart, not in the body. Still, he gives this. And number 10, which includes al jami' lidhalika kullihi wa alayhi madaru hadi al asbab, which is comprehensive and includes all of those, tajridu tawheed, to purify tawheed for Allah. That's the greatest cure. The greatest cure, Ikhwan, when I give to you from history, when Genghis Khan or Genghis Khan, he conquered and he was conquering and conquering. You should go to history and read why the whole affair with Genghis Khan started. Because of some silly Muslim. And he was chasing him throughout the Islamic kingdom to get to him. And that's why he killed, how, how many people he killed? That's why he conquered Baghdad. One of the people who opened Baghdad was a Munafiq who opened the doors of Baghdad and said to Genghis Khan, go and kill them. And of course, he got killed himself later. Because Genghis Khan said, if he betrayed his own people, he will betray me for sure, which is true. So when he killed everyone, he said, now it's your turn. When people in Egypt heard what's going on, they started doing sadaqah, they started doing salah, they started doing everything Allah said, and Genghis Khan couldn't take Egypt. That is, if we don't learn from Sharia, we must learn from the history, Ikhwan. If we are so weak that we don't believe what Allah says to us, we should look in the history books. And that, of course, is not a good thing, because we only learn, need to look in the history books to believe what Allah says. That means we, our Iman is very weak. Our belief is very weak. Because if he says something like this, you do, and it will be better, we must believe it. Even if everyone around us says, no, it's not true. Naam, so Tawheed and these, uh, and also he gave the ayah, وَإِيَّمْ سَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِدُرِّنْ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّهُ If some, if Allah afflicts you with some harm, no one can remove it except him. وَإِنْ يُرِدْكَ بِخَيْرٍ فَلَا رَادَّ لِفَضْلِهِ and if he wants to bring you some good, no one can prevent it from you. This is from Tawheed al-Rububiyyah. So Tawheed al-Rububiyyah is there to implement Tawheed al-Ibadah al We know Allah is the only one who possesses, owns, controls, creates everything. So he is the only one, as a result of that, who deserves to be worshipped. And also the Prophet ﷺ said, to uh, Ibn Abbas, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتْ أَوْ اجْتَمَعُوا أَنْ يَدُرُّوكَ لَمْ يَدُرُّوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ This is also from belief in Al-Qadr that he said to Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas is very small, 
Jan, he's telling him these great words. He said, no, that if a whole nation were to come together to harm you, they cannot do any harm except what Allah wrote, that you would get that harm. And the same applies to benefit. Now, so that is uh, because of time. We, inshallah, very briefly, we can take time. Don't worry about time. Subhanallah. It's the first time I get this notice. <laughs> this is, I think, uh, about sadaqah. It's very good. Jazakallah khair. Barakallah <laughs> It's very nice. Uh, so that is roughly, and of course, uh, still I don't want to keep you too long. We will maybe add a bit for a few more minutes. But this is regarding uh, evil eye. Because the, the, the issue of evil eye is not very complicated. And the same even with, with sihr, with magic, and other afflictions we get. And of course, we as Muslims, like I said at the beginning, we're not allowed to envy, except the Prophet ﷺ said in two cases. And even that the ulama called it ghibta, which is not envy in the classical definition of envy, but to be happy for the person to have it, and for you to want to have it the same as him, to do what he does, not just to have. And the Prophet ﷺ said there are two cases. He said the person who's been given the knowledge of the Qur'an, he didn't say the memorization. Nowadays, oh, I memorized, I'm Hafiz. Hafiz, everyone, Hafiz. Hafiz. We have you know, some chemist somewhere. The, the two people working there called Hafiz such, Hafiz such. He was what to do with chemist. What is this? Now the Hafiz has reached this, uh, that you have to show that you, if you're a chemist, you should show those pH, uh, DMS something, whatever else they have, at the end of the name. What's Hafiz got to do with chemist? But Hafiz, one brother said to me, maybe I told you, oh, go to that uh, furniture shop, there's Hafiz, brother Ibrahim, Hafiz. I said, Hafiz is his surname? He said, no, he memorized Quran. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Why do we memorize? And most of the time, if you say, brother, what's meaning? I tried with many of them. Obey Allah, obey the, the Prophet He says, I don't know. MashaAllah. What can I say? No comment. The Prophet said, the person been given the Quran, the knowledge of the Quran and understanding, and he acts on it. Acts. Now we memorize, Allah said it's haram, mortgage is haram, not. Allah said riba is haram. No, I have two houses on haram. MashaAllah. Who acts on Quran? Oh, that, you know, is, uh, try to... What? Allah said, don't do zulm to your brother. Most landlords who are Muslims, sorry if any landlords here, actually I'm not sorry. They do zulm. They do zulm. Fear Allah, Ikhwan. They do zulm. And if an English tenant comes, they're like slaves to them. Why? Most restaurant owners do the same. Most restaurant owners. If you are first in the queue, a non-Muslim came, they forget you totally. Why? Most butchers do that. I experience everything I'm telling you, I experienced. So I'm not telling you something someone told me. So the, the Quran is not something we put like, mashallah, FBI, Hafiz. What's this? Where do we see Sahaba, uh, Ubay ibn Ka'b, triple Hafiz, going around saying Hafiz, Ubay? Where? Where? We don't see that. So the Quran is not to show off, Ikhwan. The Sunnah is not to show off. The Ilm is not to show off. It's to do. To do. The beard is not to show off, so we get a discount. It's true, some people, the, as if a beard is, means automatic 20% discount. What's this? And the beard is because we obey Allah, not because we get discount or anything. So that's ikhlas. 
So the Prophet ﷺ said the person who's been given in, in one narration fiqh, understanding in the deen, and he teaches and acts on it, and he teaches it day and night, that you can want to be like him to do what he does. And again, this goes back not to dunya. Dunya, you cannot have hasad, full stop. This goes to the deen. The second person, Allah, atahu Allahu malan. Allah has given him wealth. But not because of that, but because he spends it in the way of Allah day and night. So you want to have that what he has, it is permissible. But to do what he does, not just to have. And again, it goes back to the deen. Because if he were just wealthy and he doesn't do that spending, you're not allowed to have hasad. Or ghibta, happiness, they call it. So those two cases are for the deen. So if you know a alim, or, or you know a good person, and he does good, what Allah said, it is good to want to be like him. It is good to want to be without him losing that ni'mah. That's very important. Now, let's go to tamaim. Tamaim is the plural of tamima. And tamima, the ulama of lugha said, uudha tu'allaqu ala al-insan. Uudha, something they used to do to uh, seek refuge with and to protect them. And some said, wa yuqalu hiya kharaza, kanu ya'taqidun annaha tamamu dawa'i wa shifa. They used to hang something on themselves, believing that's the way the word tamima comes from. It's tamam, is the, the complete cure. This in Lisan al Arab. And they used to believe that through those things, the amulets and talismans, what some people nowadays call ta'weez, because from the Arabic word ta'aweez, that's the plural of ta'weez. Ta'weez is to recite or to do something to seek refuge with Allah or to seek protection. They used to believe that through them you can protect yourself against evil eye. Now, and Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah said, I want to again draw your attention that Wahhabi is abusing his father, not him even. So abusing someone father is not allowed, it's kabair from the major sins. So if someone wants to call someone an evil name, try to choose something else. And of course we don't accept, like I said before, the term Wahhabi. Because it's not Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab only whom we follow. Every alim who calls to Tawheed and Sunnah we follow, including the four Imams. Rahimahumullah. He said, At Tamaim Shayun Yuallaqu ala al Awlaad at Takuna Bihil Ain. Tamaim they used to hang and to put on the children to protect them from evil eye. وقال رحمه الله he also continued by saying لكن إذا كان المعلق من القرآن فرخص فيه بعد السلف وبعدهم لم يرخص فيه ويجعله من المنهي عنه منهم ابن مسعود رضي الله عنه some of the salaf he said allowed it if it's from Quran and some they didn't allow and they considered it impermissible from them he said ابن مسعود he didn't name those who allowed it if it's from Quran one of those I remember is uh, from the Sahaba, Abdullah bin Amr bin Al-As, radiyallahu anhuma. That's what uh, Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah, said uh, in his book, Kitab al-Tawheed. And Tama'im themselves are of different sorts, different kinds, those that have no ayat of the Quran. And we will, inshallah, we have uh, overhead projector, we will show not yet. But we will show you, inshallah, after I finish uh, talking about them, we will show you some examples uh, that have no Quranic ayat or no du du dua from Sunnah. Then this is b haram by ijma of ulama. Because they said it doesn't meet the conditions of what is uh, permissible in Ruqya. Because we don't know, most of those are signs, numbers, things like that, as we shall see, inshallah. Most of them. Most of them is shirk. They seek help from jinn. They seek help from people who died. They seek help from others than Allah. And it's generally from 
magic and sha'wadha and those things that lead either lead to shirk or they themselves are shirk akbar, major shirk. For that reason, it's not acceptable for anyone to have something that has, they don't know what it has or they know for a fact it has no Quran. Like I said, some ulama, they allowed with Quran, with conditions, not just like that, with conditions. I will now mention, inshallah. Those that have Quran in them or dua from Sunnah or ruqya from Sunnah. The ulama differed. The ulama differed. Some allowed, some didn't allow. Those who allowed, they said. Just like those who say the ulama of hadith allowed to narrate weak hadith. Not like that. Ulama are not like, yani, if we understand ulama, they spend day and night studying the deen. They said, those who allowed, they said, number one, the person doesn't believe that that tam tamima or taweez, as they say in Britain, doesn't help, doesn't harm, doesn't bring anything by itself. Meaning what in Arabic we call sabab. Sabab, just like we drink paracetamol. So if we believe paracetamol cures us, We've gone the wrong way. So that's first condition. The first condition, those who allow. That you do not believe that they themselves help and cure and bring harm or benefit. You believe that only Allah cures. Second condition, that it is not, that Quran and Sunnah is not humiliated by taking it to the toilet. Most people do it. Or, like I said, I think in last week, swimming in it. I saw one person swimming in the swimming pool. I said, do you know, brother, it's from Quran or with Quran? He said, I don't know. He doesn't know. He just ordered it and got delivered to his door, maybe. Now they, mashallah, many ways to pay and free delivery sometimes. Now, so that second condition that it's not, it's Quran. I used to have one when I came from Russia. When I opened it, it had uh, some ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah, including Ayat Al-Kursi. There was no Alhamdulillah Shirk. But I didn't know what it contained, first of all. Secondly, I couldn't really remove it easily. So if I were in a hurry, I wouldn't be able to quickly remove it. So I would go to the toilet maybe, or because it's not possible if you're wearing clothes, and every time you're ripping yourself and people might think you're having a fit or something. Especially if it's in a, at work or at study or uh, somewhere outside. Now, so that's the second condition. The third very important condition is if or rather that it does not stop that person who wears it from reciting that Quran himself. I.e., I have Ayat al-Kursi, I don't need to learn it. That's very bad. Many people don't think about that one. I have Qul A'udhu Barab al-Fala, Qul A'udhu Barab al-Nas, I don't need to recite it. Or like some people put it even on the wall at home. Alhamdulillah, I have Ayat al-Kursi, no problem, I don't need to recite it. That's very bad. Or I have Dua from the Sunnah, like the ones I mentioned. I don't need to recite or do or ask Allah. That's very bad in itself. So those who allowed, they stipulated. If those conditions are not met, then they join those who said it's not allowed. So how many, let us analyze, how many of those who have those things, they fulfill those conditions? Me, myself, I agree with those who don't allow. But if I see a sheikh allowing it with these conditions, I will not say anything because these are conditions set very strict. Why, Juan? Because we cannot make anything interfere with Tawheed. Anything block the connection between us and Allah, we have to remove it. Because it's not uh, benefiting us, it's harming us. Why? Because Allah said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ we must worship Allah. We must only 
direct our thoughts to him. And we, even if we are very ill, we must be attached to Allah. And we must want to meet him. Because the believer, when he or she dies, the life for him in the grave is better than whatever life he had here. Because in the grave, just quickly to tell you, every morning and evening he sees his place in Jannah. Where you see here in Jannah your place. So that's number one. And the Prophet ﷺ said, this small space in Jannah is better than the dunya and everything. His grave gets expanded as far as his eye can see. None of us have a house like that. As far as the house, I mean as the eye can see. And he, when he dies, already the angels brought him akfan, those shrouds from Jannah, from Jannah, not from here. From Jannah, Ikhwan. And perfume from Jannah. Already they brought him. So his life there, mashallah, very nice. Don't yani, think that when a believer dies, he has hard time in the grave. His Jannah starts. So we shouldn't think that if Allah makes us die, we will have very bad life. Yes, if we were bad, we will have bad life starting from the grave, Iyadun Billah. But if the person was good and he was sincere to Allah and he or she did what they can, Allah will never disappoint them. So his Jannah starts as soon as he dies. Because the angel of death only takes his soul and then the angels are waiting. And the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith of Barab ibn Azib long, in Muslim of Imam Ahmad, very famous, describing the death of a believer and disbeliever. The believer, as soon as he dies, those angels don't allow the angel of death to hold on to his soul for a blink of an eye. They take him straight away. And they go and go and go until they reach the seventh heaven. Then Allah tells them, this is a good slave. And take him back to his body and he will wait until... Then when he sees all that, and also in addition to that, the person in the grave, a very handsome person comes with very nice smell, very f beautiful face. And he says, who are you? Because your face looks good, as if bringing good news. He says, I'm your good deeds. How many of us see every day good deeds coming to us? We don't see. So then when he, the believer sees all that, he says, Oh Allah, make the day of judgment happen. Why wait? <laughs> I see my place in Jannah. So that I'm saying to show that the connection of the believer with Allah, he should never think bad of Allah. And the connection should exist even if we are ill or healthy. Especially when we are ill because our body gets weak. When we ill. Now, so that's regarding uh, the, those that have Quran and Naam. Uh, Naam. So that's the conditions uh, that I mentioned, and also the Prophet Sallam said in a hadith narrated by Imams Ahmad and Abu Dawood. Uh, that in the ruqa wa tamaima wa tiwa la tashirk. That ruqa, generally, the ruqya that they used to do in Jahiliya, and tamaim, amulets and tawiz they used to wear in Jahiliya, and tiwala. Tiwala means, we will show inshallah, to make people love each other. No? That's shirk the Prophet said. And also, uh, the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet ﷺ sent one of the Sahaba to not, uh, to not leave in the neck of any camel any qilada or any uh, rope or from water that thing they used to use in the, uh, in the bows and uh, that you shoot from they used to do something and hang it on the camel saying it pr protects the camel so that they don't even though these are habits from before Islam, 
the Prophet ﷺ doesn't want them to leave those things because they will get attached to them. Now, and finally, I want to share what some ulama said uh, regarding aqsamu ta'alluq bi There are three types or three things in relation to being attached to others than Allah. That's very important. First one, they said, what contradicts Tawheed from its root and it is to uh, get attached to something that cannot harm or benefit in any way and to rely upon it turning away from Allah like the people who worship someone who may be in the grave or is not even alive when they have musibah when they have a problem they say oh such and such please help us yeah. Even in terms of very severe, the, Allah said in the Quran, if they, the, some of the kuffar, if they're afflicted with very bad something, they say, oh God, oh Allah. But some, they, even in those situations, they say, oh someone, not Allah, help us. That, of course, is shirk akbar. We must avoid it. All Muslims must avoid it. The second one is the one that contradicts the perfectness or the perfectness Kamalut Tawheed meaning it's not Shirk Akbar but it's Asghar minor Shirk and it goes against perfecting one's Tawheed meaning constantly relying on Allah worshipping Him alone and turning to Him that one means that He relies upon something that has some effect but forgetting about the one who created that effect who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the third is the person relies and is connected to something uh, due to that thing being a sabab, a reason of something happening, generally relying on Allah. Just like we, we gave the, I gave the example of drinking paracetamol or something, we know Allah only cures but we want to use that to ease the pain or something any medicine we use uh, so the person believes that this helps but only when Allah wills it will help and if Allah wills he will make it not effective and it will not help except through his will now so here I would like to quickly mention at the end about those uh, copper bracelets I think they're called now because a lot of questions get asked about that and it's very simple Ikhwan. if it is proven that that copper helps ease pain or something if it's proven medically then that's fine just like medicine if it's not then it comes under shirk Akbar or Asghar, depending how the person believes. So if it is proven that anything, whether it is copper bracelet or anything else, that they help, meaning they have physical properties through which they can help. Like, you know, some ointments we put, uh, like uh, pain or something, they make it hot or cold and things like that. Yeah. So they have physical properties. They relax the muscle, they make it cold, hot, and so on. So if that bracelet or anything else has those physical properties and that those physical properties help, it's permissible to use with the belief like we should have that only Allah, when He wills, it will have that effect. If He doesn't will, it will not. And He's the one giving cure. If they don't have those properties, then it's haram to use them. Because we believe in something that doesn't have any effect just like I take a piece of paper and I hold it on my hand and I say this is a special piece of paper and it helps me to breathe better or, or something along those lines now so here a brother gave me an example of a taweez you can say or tamima that has actually dua from the sunnah this is dua from the sunnah so if a person wears it according to some ulama if a person wears it with the conditions we said 
and that's very hard to to implement them that he doesn't believe that this helps by itself or that he doesn't go in the toilet because name of Allah here doesn't go to the toilet doesn't uh, disrespect yeah? and he even though he has it he uses that dua himself some ulama allow but the reason I say I'm inclined to agree with those who say not to allow because most people will not fulfill those conditions. And in any case, many, many, the Prophet ﷺ himself didn't use to wear them. And But I'm telling you about the ulama. If you see someone wearing it, at least we ask brother or sister, is this from Quran? Is this from Sunnah? If they say yes, we say, do you know that the ulama who allow it, they stipulate these conditions? If they say, oh, I don't care, then you say it's haram for you to wear it, even by those ulama. Because they say, those who don't fulfill, all ulama agree it's not allowed for them to wear it. Naam, just like weak hadith. Naam. So let's go to the slides, inshallah. Uh, we should have numbers on them. Just some examples. Uh, this is number one. As you can see in the middle, we have letters, Arabic letters, ta, ta, ha, ha, ta, ta, something. All ta, 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 ta like a machine gun in the middle. Uh, sometimes in the corners they write things like this one has Jibril and things like that. Sometimes they write names of jinn. This is one of those that's haram by ijma' because it contains elements like numbers and letters that we don't know the meanings of even though we know the numbers and we know the letters but we don't know the combination what it means Naam. so this is not allowed this type here it says for increasing love between a man and a woman please don't ask for a copy <laughs> I hope you have love between you and your wife uh, without anything and if you don't you should have Naam. number two please <laughs> this is going to be difficult one to to keep away from people we have a few to become famous to find love protection against evil spirits to pass a job interview even Allahu Akbar to acquire quick money subhanallah to get pregnant okay so these people give and of course these are all examples of the ones not allowed yani by those ulama who allow because as you can see they have strange symbols some of them even we don't know at all so those symbols generally they signify that some of them like the one to get pregnant at the bottom right hand corner they have bismillah rahman rahim allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammad sallim that is okay but meaning as to write not to wear but the rest we don't understand the the table uh, and all of them they have those symbols especially the one on the left at the bottom the top and the bottom is clear but the middle is not clear yeah. the middle is not clear even those who can read Arabic or Urdu it's very hard like the one as if it looks like uh, glasses or spectacles yeah. it's very difficult to understand uh, and this of course I want to thank all the brothers who made this uh, after thanking Allah made this possible okay let's look at number three please okay maybe we can turn it the other way around so we can see uh, that way yeah? Can, yeah no okay here we have some symbols of some groups that they say they belong to Islam but they believe for example the hand here uh, here on this is at the bottom but uh, you can see it either on the right or left depending how you look at it there is a hand they call it the hand of Fatima the daughter of the Prophet ﷺ. they believe that it protects them those who believe in those things and of course it's not true this is shirk akbar it's not allowed also sometimes you have an eye it's not shown I, I don't think it's shown here but they have they say eye of Fatima sometimes or eye that you know you may see some places being sold a, w a ring with an eye 
Naam. So they claim it protects against evil eye. That's also shirk akbar, not asghar. Because they say this protects by itself. And if the person believes it, that will definitely be major shirk. Also, these are symbols of Rafid or the Shia, who, uh, of course, are not on the right path in many things, in most things. And this sword is also, they believe, as I was informed by one of the brothers, Zahullah Khaira, they believe this is the sword of Ali, even though it should be sword of Abu Bakr, because we have people who are better than Ali, radiallahu anhu. And the tree or the plant that we have, maybe we can turn it around so we can see it at the top. It has Allah, Muhammad, Ali, Fatima, and so on. I think the family, the rest is hard to see. But that plant also, they believe this to be Shajara Tayyiba. And of course, Shajara Tayyiba in Surah Ibrahim, it means by Ijma' of Mufassirin, is the tree of Tawheed. But here we have the tree of the family. The family tree, even at the top Allah. So it's very uh, strange and it's not allowed to do that. Uh, of course, here we have uh, on the right hand side of the pot with the plant, we say, Ya Allah, Ya Fatima. Or something similar. And of course, that's not strange, unfortunately, because many people call upon others than Allah. Ali, they say Fatima, some call upon. Abdul Qadir al-Jirani, rahmahullah, who was a good uh, sheikh, used to live in Baghdad, but they got stuck to him for some reason. Naam. So, and of course, this taweez might be from the top end. Costs a lot to write. Naam, because it's not easy to write all this unless you have a print or printing press that prints them out. And of course, this one particularly is very bad. And number four, do we have number four? Here, of course, we have a very disturbing image of what looks like a woman. If you look at the face, it's a woman's face, but it's actually a man. And this is one of the shaitanic writings, devil writings. And of course, you can see all those signs, which you don't know. For sure, this is something to do with Shirk Akbar. And you with asking jinn to do things and things like that. And to the left, we have that, those, again, writings, for, uh, strange writings. Uh, and the bottom one here, uh, we have the, uh, what uh, our brother, Sheikh Abu Abdullah Talib from Leeds, because this, is, this particular, I think, is taken from his book. Here we have clear shirk associating attributes of Allah to Ali. Nah? And that's, unfortunately, some people, they do that. They go to extremes. Regarding Ali radiallahu anhu, even though Ali himself was a great man, there is no doubt that he opposed those views and he considered them to be misguided, very misguided views. So it's not allowed to attribute any attributes that only for Allah to any human being or to any creation. Now, so these are some of the examples uh, of these, uh, what we call tama'im, and uh, taweez or ta'aweez that we have. And uh, here, inshallah, we finish.